Mully and Haw, Chicago Sports Radio, 6-7 to the score. It's like Christmas morning opening a victory with the great Olin Krutz. Then he joins us now on the score hotline, which is powered by IBEW Local 9, Chicago's original powerhouse since 1892. Olin, good morning. How are you? Good morning, guys. How's it going? Victory well, Monday. Yes, Victory Monday. I mean, good mm-hmm. God, it's been a long time, and I, I think that uh, – Take the day off. Take the day off. <laughs> we could take a day <laughs> off from criticism. How about that? Uh, and it is. It is a day, and you made yeah. that point yesterday. I mean, look, I, I, this this is a really good feeling, and it was a hell of a game, mm-hmm. and uh, you, you can't say anything bad about – Tyson Bajan's performance. He um, he did not give the ball away. He was very efficient. They held the ball the whole bloody game, and, and they uh, and they scored thirty points. Yeah, we we all we all understand what we saw, right? We saw a backup quarterback lead his team to victory, and and you got to go through his story and say, look, he came from Shepherd College. No one thought he would make make a roster. He makes the roster. The Bears elevate him. Obviously, Getsy loves this kid, right? Uh, coached him in the Senior Bowl, uh, convinced the Bears to sign him, and then they elevate him by watching him in practice. And we all wondered immediately, how the hell do you elevate a guy at practice? How does he beat out Peterman? Why does he become the backup quarterback? He takes another step yesterday and, and shows you why. And just by being efficient, by getting the ball out on third down, looking like he belongs. Credit to Beijing for looking like you belong. I'm sure his goal is to eventually become a starting quarterback in the NFL. He took one more step yesterday, uh, leading his team to victory. Uh, one thing I, I thought was really good when Sanchez pointed out, uh, Deontay Foreman on the first third down drops the pass, right? The first third down of the game for the offense. Coach Flues takes the ball. Uh, you know, they get into a third down situation. He checks it down. Uh, Bajan immediately runs up to him. Taps him on the helmet, tells him, don't worry about it. We'll get it on the next drive. And they sure did. The next drive, to take it uh, down the field and score. So uh, we saw a young quarterback take a step, and we saw a defense, a secondary, continue uh, to look like they could be elite, that they play man defense and match up against guys who have pretty big names in the NFL. Olin, what was the most impressive thing that Tyson Bajan did in your mind, and how sustainable is it? You know, David, it's a great question because when when I turn the film back on, as you guys know, I like to watch film. I'm always looking for what I call, I, I tag football plays, plays that guys make that actually are in the scheme that can be very repeatable and that they can do it in this level at a high level. It's not a fluke is what I'm trying to say. He made a lot of those yesterday, if I'm being honest with you, where he went through his reads and, you know, there are third downs that hit Tyler Scott. Over the middle, I think Tyler Scott might have been his fourth or fifth read on that play. Flicks it out really fast. Uh, there were times, I think it was after a holding call on Borum. It was, uh, it was I think, right at the end of the half. And it was first and 20. And the Raiders blitzed him. And the Raiders didn't do anything real extravagant yesterday. You know, I didn't think I didn't think their defense court had a great day. But that's for another time. Um, the blitz is coming. The right side offensive line actually gets beat. They get beat there, but he flicks it out there. And again... Uh, completes, I think, a ball to Mooney, throws it low uh, where only Mooney can catch it, beats the blitz, saves his offensive line from getting beat, from getting a sack. Few times in that game, you can argue that that he should have got hit, that he should have got sacked. He got the ball out. To me, that was the most impressive thing, keeping that offense on track, keeping them ahead of the sticks. Things I thought when I watched it, well, this guy could actually do that week in and week out, uh, uh, the, the plays that he made. This segment with Olin Krutz is sponsored by Busey Bank, building business, growing wealth. Since 1868, Olin, the offensive line, had a great afternoon. Um, Mm -hmm. Do you like that particular grouping of players? And do you think that they'll stick with that for a while now? Yeah, I think they will. I think when Nate Davis comes back, they they have a decision to make there at right guard. And then you got Tevin and Cody. Uh, their left guard, but 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 for their offense, Molly, we talked about yesterday. All of a sudden, there's competition at, at certain positions. Things that make guys a little uncomfortable in that locker room, watching their backups play well. Uh, I think sometimes the best thing for a football team, right, to make guys uncomfortable, to challenge them, to say, "Look, uh, if you don't do your job, there is a guy here who wants to do it at a pretty damn high level." Now they did perform 
uh, really, really well yesterday. And I thought they were physical. And I thought Darnell Wright had a really good day against Max Crosby. Uh, they gave him some help, but he did match up sometimes one-on-one -on -one with him. I think Tevin, Darnell Wright, and Mercedes Lewis next to each other is a pretty intimidating combination. If you two guys think about those three guys lining up, I'm sure none of us want to line up against them and take on those blocks. Those three guys are monsters. The way Deontay Foreman ran the ball, ran through guys, wow. ran through arm tackles. Uh, what a great day for him. Hopefully his back is healthy. Uh, but they, they just did that against the commanders, right, guys? They just had a performance like this as commanders, took a step back against the Vikings. We got to see consistency out of this young football team. They have to learn how to handle success better. Uh, the offensive line has to put this game away almost immediately today and go back to getting better, go back to that bunker they were probably in last week when everybody told them they were terrible. Uh, you heard Coach Eberflus mention Chris Morgan after the game, offensive line coach for the Chicago Bears. He had him take a bow in front of everybody. I'm sure they're back to work this morning. I don't know how you can not like what you saw yesterday. Credit to Cody White here. After the week of everyone telling yep. him, everyone saying, get him out of town. He went out there, played well. That first touchdown, he put John Jenkins in the end zone, five yards back. Not easy to do in the NFL. Uh, credit to him for going back to work. Lucas Patrick had a good day. Uh, Borum continues to do enough there at left tackle. Uh, just a fun game to watch. Cole Komet doing all the little things to win. Uh, yesterday, a good day for the Chicago Bears. Now let's do it again. Olin, you talk about the competition at certain positions and backups watching their, their replacements or the starters watching their replacements play well. Do the Bears have competition at the quarterback position or how does it affect the pressure on Justin Fields if he does return as early as Sunday uh, from the thumb injury? To your first question, I don't think not yet, right? They, they don't have a they don't have competition at the quarterback position yet. Obviously, uh, that came straight from Coach Eberfuss. We all heard him after the game. Justin Fields is our starting quarterback, and then we all had flashbacks, right? All of us who were there in the 2000s, <laughs> we remember the uh, the Rex Grossman statements. Uh, yeah, I don't think not yet. I, I just think that you had a young guy. They, a lot of people must in that room. I mean, at that building today, David, as you know. Uh, when you have a guy like that come out of nowhere, he didn't come out of nowhere. There's guys fighting for him, right? So so a lot of people in that building talking today saying, Phew, we were right. We were right about this guy playing a shepherd, but there was just something to him at the senior bowl. There was something to him in the preseason. There's something to him in practice. But now uh, you do have another young quarterback there. Uh, if there. If there was a young center behind me who came out and played well and, and, and he showed that he could play, at NFL level, I would be worried, to be honest, right? I would be worried if I got injured and there was a young center behind me that played and showed that he could play. Uh, I know in the NFL, they're always trying to get cheaper and younger and, and trying to get a guy who can do the things that you're doing uh, th that they can get better value out of. So I'm sure Justin Fields this morning is feeling a little pressure. You might be watching film already. I would be. I'm just saying this from a player's perspective, there's no way you can't feel that heat from what that young guy did yesterday. Yeah, I mean, you'd be feeling like Casey Wegman. This yeah, segment... Casey <laughs> <laughs> Learned this, a lot from Casey yeah. Wegman. <laughs> this segment with Ole Krutz is sponsored by Plumbers 911. Plumbing emergency, call the plumbing professionals available 24-7 at 1-833-PLUM-911. So, Olin, obviously, we're you know hearing from people that want to see the kid continue, that want to see what he can do against the Chargers on Sunday night football. Um, you know, and again, and we're having this this conversation. Uh, do you do you want to see uh, him play again? Do you want to stack a couple games and try to see if there's anything to learn from that? And and uh, and you know, a lot of people are calling in saying they don't think Fields would have won that game. I, I think anybody opposing Brian Hoare Hoyer would have won that game, but but maybe I'm wrong. What do you think? No, they're out, they're out on a the limb there now. Okay. Uh, I think Fields would have won that football game against that Raiders team. Uh, they run a they run a jet sweep on third and one. Not a huge fan of the jet sweep on third and one. To Tyler Scott and Marcus Peters just said he's not going to tackle anybody. That's an example of the way the Raiders played football yesterday, right? But you can only beat the team that you're playing against on that day. Uh, the, the Las Vegas Raiders look like they weren't very interested in that game. Uh, but but I don't want to take anything away from the Chicago Bears and what they did yesterday. But to say Fields uh, couldn't have won that game is crazy, right? But 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 going back to what we were talking about earlier, look, um, I forget what year it was. Uh, uh, the Chicago Bears drafted Josh Beekman out of Boston College, right? The center mm -hmm. 
guy walked in a building. He was shorter than me. I was wondering what the hell is going on. <laughs> We're drafting guys shorter than me. And uh, uh, I remember running to the line of scrimmage. It was Josh Beekman and Roberto Garza. I said, we got a problem. I'm the tallest guy in the middle of the line. But uh, <laughs> uh, to the point of it is this. I felt that, guys. Like, I knew that Josh Beekman was in the building, a young center. Oh. I knew that they were trying to develop somebody else. So you know as a player, right? Justin Fields knows. We all know as players that they have guys coming in the building. And if a guy can do a job in the NFL, there's not a lot of them, guys. There's only 32 starters at every position, right? If a guy shows he can be a starter it's, or a guy shows – to pique your interest is what, what Bajan did to us yesterday, right? There's no way that you cannot be interested in seeing this guy play quarterback more in the NFL after what he put on film yesterday. It wasn't great by any means. It wasn't amazing by any means. You don't say give him Justin Fields' job by any means. But there's no way you don't say, I'd like to see more of that kid uh, play the quarterback position, the way he gets the ball out, the way he ran that offense, the way he told the crowd – uh, let's get going a little bit here. The feeling he had, the way he told Deontay Fer Foreman, pick up your head, don't worry about it, I'm going to get the ball right back to you. Let's get going, let's get back in the huddle, let's score a touchdown. So uh, there's no way you can't want to see that kid more, and there's also no way uh, that, that 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 is not Justin Fields' job right now. So very interesting situation to have going on there at Hallis Hall. But like I told you guys, as a former player, I always knew when there was a pretty good damn young center behind me, and I was always a little worried about it. Josh Beekman drafted in the fourth round of the 2007 NFL draft. I don't think Ryan I was trying Poe's, to. Ryan uh, Poe's former teammate. Yes. Ryan Poe's former teammate there. Is that right? Well, I, don't, I don't think I was trying to run you out of town at that point, Owen. I think you still <laughs> had a few more years left. Yeah, you waited a few. <laughs> yeah, I waited a few. Hey, David, you still are. Gosh, <laughs> man. Come on. So let, let's go to the other side of the ball. The defense is clearly playing at a high level, Owen. I think that uh -huh. you talked last week about the secondary, and it was a good point. And they do look elite at times. And – in four in three games, they've given up 44 points. What, in your mind, has changed about this defense to allow it to be, I don't want to say dominant, but it certainly has been more effective the last three games? I think I, you you mentioned it. They're secondary and, and Kyler Gordon. I got a few videos of him. I, I haven't posted it, but, but if you go back, guys, and you want to watch something fun, uh, watch that young man come off the edge when he blitzes. Watch the body control and the body angles he puts his body in and the speed he plays that nickel cornerback at, which you know with Kenny Moore, with Rondé Barber in right. this scheme through the years. Very important position for that Tampa 2 defense, the nickel will, the nickel Sam they call when they take Sam Bourne out and they bring him in. Uh, Tyreek Stevenson, right? Uh, on that first drive, uh, Devontae Adams is eating his lunch, right? You're like, oh man, this is going to be a long day. I don't know if you guys thought that, but I thought it, right? When Devontae Adams is running those slants yeah. and and, and Devontae Adams obviously drops that touchdown, runs a great route, but it happens in the NFL. But on third down, on a 23-yard line, on the first drive of the game, they go to Devontae Adams. Uh, Coach Flues puts him one-on-one, -on -one, right? He's in one-on-one -on -one with what a lot of people consider the best route runner in the NFL. And Tyreek Stevenson makes a great play and breaks up that slant, and they miss the field goal. Big play of the game right there, uh, David. But to your point, uh, Brisker, right? Bob Sanders. I say Bob Sanders. I say John uh, uh, Lynch. Right, uh, mm -hmm. uh, just these guys through the years in this Tampa too. These safeties, these safeties who fill the box, who play, who set the tone. Mike Brown, you guys remember Mike mm -hmm. Brown here? Tough safety. These guys are very, very important in that defense. So that secondary, I think Jalen Johnson, you know, wants to get paid. Right, those guys are playing at a very high level. I credit them. We talked about what effect would their defensive corner, their second, the secondary expert, Allen Williams, not being there. What would that have on them? Hasn't had much of effect on them. Now they're letting the D-line, it takes them some time to get home, but every once in a while they get home. Uh, that secondary, along with T.J. Edwards and Tremaine Edmonds, the main reason that there is one unit on that Bears team, the main reason this Bears team is looking different, guys, the whole team, is those guys in the back end of the defense, they, are, they could be. I'm telling you, when I turn the film on, I see a unit that I don't know where I'm going to throw the ball and I don't know where I'm going to run the ball because now they can play bear and stack the box because they're going to play cover one on you. So so then the answer is fairly obvious to this question. You know, Jalen Johnson, he gets two picks in the game. He has a pick six, and he signals he's getting paid. And he was asked <laughs> afterward if that was sending a message. He said, you're damn right, to 100%. <laughs> so he wants to get paid, um, uh -huh. and I got no problem with that. But don't you kind of have to send a message to that group that we're taking mm -hmm. care of everyone, that we 
you know, we're we're keeping guys here that you're all coming up together, or is that overrated? No, I think I think you have a great point there, and and you know, it, it, to me in the locker room, I love that man. I, I if I if my teammate was screaming, I want to get paid. Good for him, and I hope he gets paid, right? So so that is part of playing in the NFL. Uh, you know, Pat Manley talked about yesterday on the post game and the pregame show about how happy everybody would be in a locker room when a guy would get paid, and how motivating that is when a guy gets to that contract that everybody in that locker room is trying to work towards their big payday, right? And and you get a guy, eventually, like you're saying, Molly, Ryan Post has to pick somebody, hang him up in front of the room and say, if you do things this way, if you work this hard, right, that this is the Chicago Bears way, this is who the Chicago Bears are, this is the kind of players that we re-sign here in this locker room, guys we draft, guys we develop, uh, guys who are going to help us lead our team out of this this era of losing, uh, you know, that, that we need to get out of. This is the kind of guy who's going to help us get there because uh, we drafted him, we developed him, he is a Chicago Bear. I think that is important eventually when they do that, and it'll be very interesting when they do hang that sign on somebody because then you know this is who they think they are. Where does Deontay Foreman fit in all of that? Because I agree with everything you just said. It's important to – retain and keep guys and pay them when they earn it. And here's a, a, basically an NFL mercenary who's gone from team to team and done pretty much exactly what he did yesterday, stabilize the running game, run people over, and very quietly establish a presence, Olin. I wonder how much that is valued by the Bears and how important that is moving forward. Actually, it was important yesterday, right, when you watch that game. And like you're saying, David, but I don't really know what this guy brings to special teams, right? I don't know because he's not your starting running back. Uh, you know, if Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson were still there, um, he would. he's actually the third running back, and maybe it's why he wasn't getting dressed. It's because special teams, right? you got to be able to play special teams if you're in that third running back role. You have to be what they call a four-phase special teams player, kickoff, kickoff return, punt, punt return. So I don't know that whole – what he brings to that because they didn't dress him for weeks until he was a starting running back. But uh, yesterday brought an attitude to Soldier Field. Uh, we talked about in the post-game show, nothing better. They want to run it back. It's running through people. The Raiders are making business decisions on the back end. No one looked like they wanted to tackle this guy. He was running hard, running over guys. Josh Jacobs came out in the second half. I think the coach challenged him. Look at the guy on the other side. He's not even getting paid. Look at the way he's running the ball. Josh Jacobs came out, tried to run the ball like that first three or four downs. Uh, got himself a little nicked up. And then that, that took them out of the game. So uh, credit to Deontay Foreman for the presence he brought to Soldier Field yesterday. But as you know, David, in this NFL, you got to do it again, and you got to do it week in and week out, and you got to provide value to your team if you want to keep suiting up on Sundays, Mondays, or Thursdays. And um, when you look at what we saw yesterday, you know they're heading to uh, L.A. to play the Chargers on Sunday night football. We know that uh, Herbert's got a big arm. You know, I, I mean, I, I'm not suggesting that the Bears try to get into a track meet with that team, but I'm just curious – uh, is this sustainable? Is is the way they played this game sustainable for uh, for next weekend on national TV? That's a great thing about the NFL, Molly, and what a great thing, right? We're not talking about burning down Hallis Hall. We're already talking about next week's matchup. Boy, do I love this. <laughs> but, they, but listen, this, we talked about how great the secondary has looked. Well, here they come, right? Here comes the match. This is the NFL. As soon as you think you're playing great, here comes somebody who's really good at what you think you're doing well, right? And, and they get a chance on national television, this secondary. If I am Coach Flues, I am challenging them as soon as I see them, right? Uh, you can't cover Keenan Allen. That's kind of things I'm saying in the building, right? You can't do this, right? You guys can't stop Herbert. And I'm just trying to piss them off. I'm trying to get them mad. I'm trying to get them to hate this Chargers uh, skill position to prove that, look, we can do this against this team, that we can play at a high level. Is what I saw on film sustainable? Sure it is. It is uh, with the way they were playing that secondary. Now there's a big matchup coming. They have their weapons. They have a good quarterback. Uh, their defense is a question mark for them. Not playing really, really well right now sometimes. That's who you're playing against. But uh, I, I am excited. Sunday night, I don't know who's been playing quarterback. Excited to see either of those guys. I want to see what Fields does after he watched Bajan if he plays. Yeah. And I want to see what Bajan does on the field against uh, Staley's defense, matching up concept-wise. And I want to see this secondary and the linebackers versus what the Chargers bring 
uh, uh, on Sunday Night Football. Great stuff, Olin. Thank you. Really Thanks, appreciate Olin. it. Thank you, guys.